Hello and welcome back to my next video. Today we're going to continue talking about and testing the soft, flexible solar panels. They're uh, like suitcase panels. You can see this is actually a 200 watt solar panel. It comes complete with the controller and everything that fits right in this little pouch. This one's made by Dokio and this one's 200 watts. I actually have three of them made by Dokio, a 100 watt and an 80 watt. We're going to test them all. We're also going to test one from Renogy and one from a company called Echo Power. So they're soft, they're flexible, and uh, they're very easy to move around and light. If you're in a car and you have to set these out, you can do it really, really easy. This is the biggest at 200 watts, and oh, that's not the smallest, but it folds the smallest, this Echo Power. And uh, I'm, re I'm really impressed with the Echo Power. So we're going to test all five of these. For durability. I've had them for about 10 days now. I've had them sitting out. Cody likes to, I don't know, Cody loves to walk on them. He loves to sleep on them. I think they're warm in the sun, so he likes sleeping on something warm. Uh, we actually got some rain here in the desert, and they got quite wet. They've been wet, and they continue to work just fine. And that's what I want to do as a long-term test, I mean years, to let you know how these things hold up. They're actually pretty darned inexpensive. This is the most expensive because it's 200 watts, and it was $250 for a complete 200 watt system. This is its controller right here, and uh, we're gonna test it just a minute. So, and let me show, fold this out. So this one folds out to four 50 watt panels, and it's small, and still pretty small, pretty light, pretty easy to move around. But again, this one folds out to three 35 watt panels. So it's much smaller, much lighter, uh, much easier to handle. What we're here today is to um, measure their amp hours. How many amps are they putting out an hour? So the first thing you want to do whenever you uh, buy a new solar panel, new or used or any kind, is test its voltage. You want to know that it's putting out the right amount of voltage. And if you have an amp meter, you want to check its amp hours to make sure it's putting enough amps. So that's what we're going to do with all of them. Uh, I've actually checked their vo uh, volts already and they're all correct, but I'll show you how I did it. Uh, so the three Dokios are at um, 20.5 uh, voltage and the other two, the Echo Power and the Renogy are both at 19.6. Uh, they're just a different cho a number they the manufacturer chose. They're all putting out the accurate amount of power that they're supposed to put out. Let me show you how you test and then how you find out the amps. This is a clamp on amp meter. It will also do, and that's why I love this, and I really recommend this for all of you, uh, it will do volts, just like your voltmeter will, uh, if you should have one. If you don't, you should get one. And it will also test amp hours. So that makes it a really, really handy tool. So to test for volts, you set it on the volts. This uses an SAE connector. And you just put them in. So this one is at 20.1, uh, yeah, about 20.1 volts. And uh, on this day, that's what it's putting out. So it's 20.1 volts. So the volts is fine. That's right where it should be. But we don't want to know, just know the volts. We want to know the amps. So to do the amps, we're going to hook it up to a battery. I've got a battery right here. You see, this is how you connect them. This is an SAE Quick Connect. They just go in, can you see that? They just go in like this, and now they're connected. All of these use alligator clips to clamp on to the battery. I'll show you in a later video how to cut these off and add uh, rings so you can actually connect them and you don't want clips. So the battery is actually at 11.9. That battery is really low. I've been running it down so it would be really hungry for today's test. We're done with that, so we'll take these off, just like yours. Now it's no longer a voltmeter, it's a clamp on amp meter. It's got a setting here for 40 amp. And you'll see here, see that good? You'll see here that this is just a little lever. My, you open that up and you put one wire at a time right in there. So we'll test the positive. And the, it's putting out 6.7 amps. That's what it's doing. 6.7 amps. Now it's at 6.9 amps. 
Now I'm just going to uh, I'm going to disconnect them all, fold them up, and just go down the right line and test them all. So next we'll test the Echo Power, two hundred and seventy dollars. So it was expensive. It's only one hundred and five watts. It's the smallest, and I think it's the highest quality of all of them. Everything about this panel seems to be made of better quality. It has actual grommets. The fabric seems better. It has um, legs. I'll show you here in a minute. The um, actual controller is a kind of a name brand Epiver. And uh, so it's an actual name brand. It's, and by far the highest quality clamps of all of them. We'll go ahead and test it for amped. I have already tested the volts and it's fine. And it's putting out 4.9. So this is actually putting out a much higher a percentage than the Dokio. This is putting out 4.9 amps and it's only 105 watts and the Dokio is only putting out 6.9 so something's wrong there. It should be putting out a lot more than 6.9. So next up is the Renogy. This is a, a Renogy 100 watt. It's two 50 watt panels. The quality seems pretty good. Not quite as good as the Echo Power, but pretty good. It does have rings that are just sewn in, and once this breaks, you're done. One of the things that disappoints me is the very low quality of these alligator clips. Uh, it's the lowest quality of any of them, uh, and the Echo Power has the highest. So we'll go ahead and check the amps on it now. It's also putting out 4.9, which is just about what 100, this is a 100 watt panel, so 4.9 is just about right. So it's putting exactly the same number of amps, 4.9, out as the um, as the Echo Power was, which is what it should be. They're the same size panels. They should be both putting out about five amps. So we're back to the uh, Dokio, and it also is a 100 amp, 250 amp panels, just half of what the uh, 200 water is. Two of the 50 panels. So let's test it. Exact same thing. It's using SAE connectors. Just plug them in, and with an SAE. You can actually get grab an extension off Amazon and then just put an extension in between to make it longer really cheaply. So we're going to attach the negative, attach the positive, do the same thing, and it's putting out 3.9. So it's way below what it should be putting out. So it's putting out a full amp lower, and I don't have any clue why. So now we're going to test the Dokio 80. This is by far the cheapest of all of them. It's $119 for an 80 watt panel, and it's uh, smaller than either of the other Dokios. Uh, it's not quite as small as the Echo Power or the Renogy, but it's still quite a bit smaller than the other Dokios. It's very light. Uh, it's cheap. At $119 for 80 watts of solar, that's just incredibly cheap. Includes the controller and everything to, to make it work. Let's try it. And it's putting out 2.3. So we'd have to figure that out. It should only be 20% less, and they're putting out five. It should put out uh, one amp less. It should be, it's just not nearly enough. 2.4. So one thing to be aware of, and that an amp meter will make very, very clear, is that by uh, tilting a panel, you get a lot more power. So I just checked the uh, vo the amp meter and off of this and it's hooked up this the echo power is hooked up and it's producing uh, four seven eight four almost four point eight what happens if we tilt it the echo power is the only one that has any kind of a leg now I would never leave them up in the wind you can see it's just a, a strap that's all I wouldn't leave this up in any kind of a wind but on a calm day and I was sure it was going to stay calm. I think this would work real well. And that gives you about a 45 degree. It's it comes with it. Now, and we're just about aimed really well at the sun. Let's check it now. So we were at 48 before and now we are at 58. We went up a full amp. So we went up one full amp just by tilting this. So you can see that uh, in, tilting really, really pays off with any of them. I mean, to get an extra amp an hour all day, uh, that's eight, ten amps easily at the end of the day just by tilting them. So, 
and under certain circumstances. If this was uh, January or February, the difference would have been much more noticeable, especially at noon. We're a little past noon now. So for some reason, all three of the Dokios are not putting out uh, all the amps I would expect them to put out. 200 Water is putting out 6.2 amps the last time I checked, and this one is putting out uh, flat 4.8. Yeah, it's still 4.8. So uh, for some reason, that Dokio 200 is underperforming, and this is doing the echo power uh, is producing exactly what I would expect. So we're going to check this um, uh, Dokio again, and we're going to try it tilted and see if that helps. So it's at 3.8 now. Still a full 3.9, it's a 3.9 three essentially, uh, a full amp below either, either of the other 100 waters. So it's underperforming. Now let's tilt it. That's a pretty good tilt. Aim pretty much right at the sun. And it's now doing 5.3. So tilted, it's 5.4. Flat, it's 3.9. It went up 1.4. Yeah, it's uh, it's 4. Right now it's putting out 4. And tilted, 5.2. Oh, it went up 1.2. Uh, the best thing I got was about 5.3. So it's still half an amp lower tilted than the ACA power. Okay, so there you have it. We've um, we bought all the, these five different panels, and the uh, the Renogy and the Echo Power are performing just exactly the way you would expect, really well. So for whatever reason, the Dokios are un, uh, underperforming in amps actually produced into the battery, and that's the only thing that counts. How many amps is a panel going to put into your battery? The 200 watt is still putting out the most, but not as much as it should be for its size. Uh, and so I also bought an MPPT controller. It's an inexpensive one. It's, uh, I paid $70 for it. The brand name is Echo Worthy. It's, it's an incredible value for $70. I found it to be a very reliable and, it, and a very efficient. What I'll do is I'll, I'll put one of these SAE plugs on it so that we can plug it into all of these or those use MC4s, I'll put an MC4 on it and we'll test it with the same controller on all of them and we'll see. My guess is it's the, the low quality controller is just wasting some power and you can get it all back. I'm hoping you can get it all back with a better quality controller. And I also think you'll see that we will get uh, probably another amp out of an MPPT than we are out of these P cheap PWMs. We'll find out. That's why we'll do the experiment. But as of now, they're all working. The Dokios are underperforming. Uh, the Renogy and the Aquapower are performing perfectly, and they do, of course, produce at least an amp more an hour by tilting them. So there we go. There we have it. I'll keep you informed and uh, up to date as everything changes. They've been kind of abused uh, for about 10 days. They've gotten wet, and they're showing no signs of being damaged by that. Uh, so we'll find out a long-term test, and we'll update you as we go along. So thanks for watching this video. Uh, I really appreciate each and every one of you checking us out. The next video I think you might want to watch is my video on introducing these, unpacking them, and give you more idea about them. Would these work for you? Why do you think the Dokio are underperforming? To know more about them, you might want to go back now here and watch the first video in this series about them. And down here is another video about an introduction to solar basics, USB solar panels. If you got anything out of this video, uh, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button.